Welcome, cherished viewers. As Supreme Master Television rejoices in another wonderful year of constructive programming, we thank you for your global viewership and invite you to join us in celebrating our channel's fourth anniversary through a vibrant concert replete with international flares entitled Gifting Peace. With enthusiastic participation of esteemed individuals, the concert promises a memorable journey to artistic realms through outstanding poetry, music, and dance. Hosted by the very vegan and very accomplished duo, John Sally and Lisa Bloom, our program features Oscar-nominated actor Eric Roberts as guest speaker, veg and animal-loving celebrity presenters, and traditional dance ensembles, truly a gathering of compassion, talent, and beauty. On this delightful occasion, we are honored to present the world premiere of songs adapted from Supreme Master Ching Hai's poetry. Enthralled by the poet's sublime verses, eminent American composers were inspired to set them in the magical language of music, and new masterpieces were lovingly brought into being. Extraordinary composers of these exquisite creative offerings include two-time Oscar winner Al Kasha, Oscar and Emmy winning Bill Conti, Grammy winner Bill Cunliffe, and Oscar and Grammy winning David Shire, all of whom dedicated their magnificent works as a special surprise to the poet Supreme Master Ching Hai. Master Ching Hai is a terrific poet. I didn't change one word in any of her poems, but it takes a lot of heart and a lot of soul to be a good poet or writer. She does it so naturally, you would think that someone actually didn't teach her, but most probably God taught her and gave her that gift. I like her message. I like her, um, the quest for love, the quest for connection with, with others and with someone special. That seems to be a theme of a lot of her poetry. I think that poetry and music and what she stands for in poetry and music is just wonderful. I think it's probably because of the largeness of the Supreme Master's soul that she has the kind of uh, uh, largeness of artistic temperament. I was looking for poems that were contrasting in subject matter, and I felt they were more uh, deserving of a, a kind of art song setting, like they were almost classical songs, so I took that approach. To perform two songs that I wrote using Supreme Master Ching Hai's lyrics was a real honor because those lyrics were really beautiful. As a singer-songwriter, I think it could be a hit song. You know, I really do. I think it's got that really sweet, charming vibe to it. And the lyrics really, yeah, got me here. If I'm going to write something to another person's lyrics, they have to touch me. And they, those lyrics both touched my heart, yes. The splendid lyrics and melodious music are superbly conveyed by acclaimed musicians. Multi-platinum recording artist Donna Lewis performing her own magical compositions of Supreme Master Ching Hai's poetry. Tony Award winner Karen Ziemba, Grammy nominee Kashif, lyric soprano Leah Allers, Emmy winner and Tony nominee Liz Calloway, Tony Award winner Melba Moore, Grammy winner Melissa Manchester, all-time favorite Alexis or Vietnamese male vocalist Duan Ngo and pop diva Chan Tu Ha. With greatest privilege, Supreme Master Television and audience members joyfully greeted the inspiration of the channel. Supreme Master Ching Hai graced the concert via teleconference as the guest of honor and shared her insights during a spontaneous question and answer session about love, peace and forgiveness, and what it can mean for ourselves, our gentle animal co-inhabitants, and our beautiful planet. 
In addition for her prodigious endeavors to assist humanity as a world-renowned humanitarian, artist, and spiritual teacher, Supreme Master Ching Hai was recognized with a presidential award from United States President His Excellency Barack Obama, presented by the Honorable Mike Davis, California State Assembly Member. Supreme Master Ching Hai's precious poems, along with the composer's soaring melodies and the singer's phenomenal voices, are invaluable gifts from the heart. And from such a tender place of love within each one of us, may an era of harmony for all creation soon ascend on the wings of divine grace. Please enjoy Supreme Master Television's fourth anniversary concert, Gifting Peace. Let's give another round of applause Woo! to the Tate Shaw Sign Dance Company for the opening today's concert with exhilarating rhythms of African spirit through their performance of Sensani. Tesa Shosan, which means keepers of the tradition, share the finest of West African dance and percussion heritage as led by founder and director, Mr. Bernard Uriba Thomas and co-director and choreographer, Ms. Amanisha Cunningham. And they're both trained by some of the best artists from Mali, Guinea, Senegal, and Liberia. Very impressive, yeah. Lisa. You got your facts down. That's I true. like that. You about got you. that right, John. All right. She's a really good lawyer. She's a CNN legal analyst. No one can beat an argument, so don't even <laughs> don't try to get it done. Don't even try. All right. Thanks for the compliment, John. You're welcome. And John, do you feel like there's a little inequality in this picture? You have a, you're that wonderful passion for law, and you can tell it goes everywhere you go. <laughs> no, I, I mean something else. Hmm, what do you mean? Like, 
seeking justice for defensive and weak people, including all the animals in the world? Well, that is true. I am a very passionate animal lover and mm -hmm. vegan. Yes. Uh, see, uh, I don't eat animals either. <laughs> and I know you don't eat them. That makes you so smart and beautiful. Thank and you. Uh, I'm a vegan, if you can tell. And literally, for all you people that want to get taller, the least amount of animals you eat, the taller you get. <laughs> That's true. For all of those who think vegans are weak and small, take a look at my seven-foot-tall friend, John, right yeah. here. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> all right. OK, we're ready to yeah. get going? Yes, we are. OK, all right, let's do it. Welcome to Supreme Master Television's fourth anniversary concert. Gifting peace. And we're very pleased to have you all join us today for this joyous occasion, celebrating Supreme Master Television's four years of constructive programming for a peaceful world. How refreshing that is. First of all, I want to introduce you officially to my co-host, Mr. John Sally. So check it out, check it out. He is perhaps best known as the first U.S. NBA player to win four basketball championships with three different teams, the Detroit Pistons, Chicago Bulls, and the L.A. Lakers. Go L.A. <laughs> keep going, Lisa, keep going. Oh, yeah. In fact, John has been a positive role model at every stage of his life. This selfless determination that he has is extended into the entertainment field as well. He's played in a number of Hollywood movies. He's hosted an Emmy Award-nominated sports show, and he currently owns his own production company. Keep and, going, keep going. Yes, and perhaps my favorite part, he's a devoted vegan and dedicates his time to showing others how to eat and exercise to stay healthy and strong just like he is. Please welcome Mr. John Sally. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lisa. And now let me introduce my lovely uh, co-host. Ms. Lisa Bloom. She is a CNN legal analyst, as I said earlier, a CBS new legal analyst. And before, she hosted her own show that I used to watch all the time, national TV show on Court TV. Remember, she had it down pat. You can tell <laughs> this is who you want to be, your, your lawyer. Thank you. Uh, as an award-winning journalist, she covered the major trials and took on the giants defending the vulnerable. Thank See, you. even me, Thank you. I'm going to hire her. She's going to walk in. <laughs> the judge is going to look at me in and go, oh, man, Lisa's here. All right, <laughs> to no surprise, Ms. Bloom is a passionate vegan supporting justice, the voiceless animals. Please join me and welcome my co-host, Ms. Lisa Bloom. And today we are also privileged to have as presenters Emmy award-winning actress Lindsay Wagner, actress Trina Parks, the first African-American female in a James Bond film, Yogi Cameron Alborzian, actor Patrick Kilpatrick, actress Spice Williams Crosby, and television host Brandy Williams. Oh. <laughs> Pretty impressive, right? Patrick Kilpatrick, I like that guy. He's tough, <laughs> always looking tough. All right, let us now welcome some of our dignitaries that are in attendance today. The Honorable Madam Kopat Son John, Vice Consulate to South Africa, Mr. Roger Adler's Oscar Award nominated director of Lion King. And Ms. Margie Evans, international vegetarian jazz musician. Mm. Mr. Kerry Brown, three time Emmy Award winning vegan director and producer. Dr. Larry Tim, professor of film music. Model, Ms. Natasha Blasick. Film musician, Mr. Martin Blasick. Mr. John Gentry Tennyson, distinguished composer and conductor. And of course, Supreme Master Ching Hai is joining us via teleconference. Supreme Master Ching Hai, when I first got your book, The Noble Wiles, I looked at it, it was very nice photographs. The words, and it made me feel really good. Now this is a trip, because I was having a bad day, and I opened it up, and I was gonna show it to my six-year-old daughter, who's now seven, and I was like, wow. This is really nice. And I know, so that it book really made a big impression it did. On you. It, it really changed it. And then I got to do an interview, and I really like what Supreme Master Ching Hai stood for. And uh, many other composers and singers are also moved by your poetry. So, Supreme Master Ching Hai, uh, we have a surprise for you. We know you're really shy about your poetry, but they're very profound and lyrical. The poems were so inspirational that these composers have set them to music. And that's how this event came about for the Supreme Master TV's fourth anniversary. I hope that you and the audience enjoy the nice surprises to come. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to invite up Mr. Bob Jimenez, representative of California State Senator Ron Calderon, 
who is currently chair of the Senate Select Committee on California Film and Television Industries, a member of the California Film Commission and co-chair of the legislature's Art Council. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome. Thank you very much for this invitation. I'm Bob Jimenez, Communications Director for the 30th Senate District. The Senator has sent me here to remind all of you that television is power. It's the most pervasive, persuasive medium that we have ever invented. It reaches more people in one minute than the largest newspaper you can think of reaches in one month. And the Senator and I both believe that that carries with it an awesome amount of responsibility to use this medium with dignity and intelligence and compassion, a sense of moral and social responsibility. So as Supreme Master Television brings us a little bit closer, brings the family of mankind a little bit closer, I am pleased to come here and present on behalf of Senator Ron Calderon, who is chair of the prestigious Senate Select Committee on Film and Television Industries in this state, this Gold Senate Certificate, which reads Supreme Master Television in recognition of your fourth anniversary, State Senate of California commends and salutes your constructive programming as you and the artistic community commemorate the occasion of your milestone achievement. Thank you very much. Mr. Eric Roberts is an Academy Award nominee and three-time Golden Globe nominee for his roles in Runaway Train, Star 80, and King of the Gypsies. He also won the Theater World Award for his Broadway debut in Burn This, one of my all-time Broadway favorites, and a Golden Satellite Award for the 2002 season of Less Than Perfect and Best Actor in the New York Independent Film Festival. His younger sisters, uh, Julie Roberts and Lisa Roberts Gilliam, as well as his daughter, Emma Roberts, following Eric's footsteps in this illustrious Hollywood career of their own. His unique and bold talent have made him sought after for a wide range of roles in film, music videos, television, including films like my favorite, The Pope of Greenwich Village, uh, Batman, The Dark Knight, the sitcom Less Than Perfect, and one of his personal favorites, the popular NBC drama Heroes. And he not only appears in the fictional show Heroes, but he is a true hero in real life. Along with his beautiful wife, actress Eliza Roberts, Mr. Roberts is a vegan, you go, and dedicated animal lover who rescues and adopts our less fortunate animal friends. Let's welcome to the stage Mr. Eric Roberts. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, John. I love the dress, Lisa. <laughs> I'd like to ask all of you, what is constructive programming? According to Supreme Master Television, constructive programs are about living healthy, going green for the planet, and bridging cultures. It's about finding harmony with fellow humans and animals and the environment. Supreme Master Television has essentially helped redefine constructive programming in our times. There are meaningful movies, good technologies of the future, and spotlights on role models and unsung heroes all around us, both human and, of course, animal. And not to neglect food for the spirit, you can absorb the words of wisdom from the world's diverse faiths and listen in on discussions about life and the universe. Supreme Master Television is a globe of channels, broadcasting on every continent via 14 satellite platforms, 77 cable and IPTV networks, and 18 online video channels. That is a lot. The programs are hosted in more than 60 languages, and there are subtitles in over 40 languages. Correspondents report from 200 plus locations worldwide. So, how did this relatively young, unique global channel began. It was through the inspiration and guidance of Supreme Master Ching Hai. And the channel has gone from strength to strength in his pure-hearted mission of offering the world informative and uplifting programming. As a world-renowned humanitarian, 
Supreme Master Ching Hai gives freely of her own independent earnings from her artworks to virtually every corner of the globe wherever there is need. For every major disaster or place of suffering, she does her best to help and provide comfort to fellow humans and of course the animals. A concerned world citizen and environmentalist, Supreme Master Ching Hai coined the slogan, be veg, go green to save the planet, to urge people towards adopting the vegan diet because it's the best thing we can do to stop some of the worst harms to our planet. Supreme Master Ching Hai also is a multi-talented modern day Renaissance artist. She paints, designs clothing and jewelry, and even wrote and directed an epic comedy drama titled The King and Company. It is now premiering on Supreme Master Television. She is as well an international best-selling author of animal books, a composer, and a poet. We'll soon have the privilege to enjoy some of her poems in the performance to come tonight. And on behalf of all artists and entertainers involved, I'd like to add that we're so glad to have this chance to be inspired by her poetry and bring it forth for a wider audience to enjoy through this concert. Indeed, Supreme Master Ching Hai is an extraordinary lady who gives and gives with compassion and grace. It is my great pleasure to introduce our special guest of honor, who has graciously made time in her busy schedule to be present with us in this celebration. Please join me in welcoming Supreme Master Ching Hai. <laughs> Supreme Master Ching Hai, we're so happy to have your presence here today. Please share a few words for us. Hello? Oh, is that Eric? It's Eric Roberts. Oh, wow, wow, what an honor. Oh, thank you. I'm your friend, how is your sister? Doing? She's wonderful, thanks for asking. Wow. <laughs> And uh, how many babies Julia has now? <laughs> she, she has three, two twins, and an extra. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Congratulations to her, my I will God. pass it on her. Thank you. <laughs> Beautiful. How are you? How about you? Tell me. I'm as happy as a man can be. I have a wonderful wife. I have a wonderful daughter. I, I, have, I have two wonderful sisters. And I know you. Wow. <laughs> Okay, okay. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank you for honoring us this way. All my love and respect. Supreme Master Ching Hai. Thank you, sweetheart. Hello, Supreme Master Ching Hai. This is Lisa Bloom and John Sally. Hi. Hi, all the loving people. I'm so glad to have the opportunity to talk to you. How's everybody? I guess you all right, enjoying a good time, huh? Where I am right now, we don't have a high tech, so uh, I can only phone you, but uh, you cannot see my face. <laughs> but I think you all know what I look like. I look, is it still the same like you saw me last? <laughs> anyway, at least I can phone you, right? Imagine some far remote decades ago, we cannot even do, do this. Yeah, contacting each other in this way was a wild dream. And now it's a common thing, daily life practice. Just pick up the phone and call anybody, no matter how far away. In the future, if humans acting more in a loving kindness as the children of God would do, then we will be able to develop more incredible technology that we could not imagine right now. So in order to make up for this, you're welcome to ask me any question you want, either on the spot or you can write it down and give it to my people and I will surely answer you personally. Thank you for coming and I really hope you have a good time. You do, right? Yes. yes. Well, Supreme Master Ching Hai, I find it fascinating that you have been all over the world to give lectures of all kinds of topics, like peace and the concert today uh, called Gifting Peace. And some of us have been talking. Uh, peace is something that everyone talks about. 
But right. how do we really, really have a peaceful world? So we were wondering today if we would be honored with a chance to interact a little bit. If I ask you that question. How do we get peace for this world? Uh, all right, love. I will try. This is like asking for the moon, isn't it? Yes. We have to hope for peace. We have to work for it. There's no other choices because uh, if we don't, then you can see already the consequences, yeah? Yes. Yes. It's like a chain effect even. It's like a domino effect and uh, so much suffering already. But I think we are having like a glimpse of hope about peace. It seems like that way, don't you think? Yes, I agree with you. How do we stop war, huh? Okay. It only stops when all of us contribute to peace in our action, speech, and thought. And of course, we have to also advise our government that peace is the only thing we want. And we do not want war at all. Because deep down in our heart, everyone's heart, everyone just love peace so that they can go around in their business and the actors can have uh, peace of mind and time to entertain people and the uh, husband will be staying home to love his wife and the father would be there for the children. I don't know why we ever even think of war at all. Because from all we know, since time immemorial, war has not brought much happiness or any good things to humankind. Yes. So we should have learned from the history and we should never start the war in any case. All right, that's how we do it. Just don't start the war. Don't start at all. <laughs> Master Ching, hi. I, I have a question for you on a little bit different subject. Uh, and this, yeah. is, this is Lisa Bloom. I, I work in American television frequently and often the messages are negative and they're on topics that are not important. And I'm so impressed that your network focuses on positive, ins inspirational, constructive stories. Why did you, you choose to do that? Why did you choose to focus your network on the positive and constructive stories? Oh, I see, I see. Huh? Because that's what people want, no? And not too many people do it, so someone has to do it. <laughs> if I didn't do it, maybe you would have done it. <laughs> and we have to do some positive, constructive news so that we can bring as much as possible positive energy into the world to counter the dark energy that we are having all over. Dark energy, negative thinking, negative feeling, negative uh, talk, negative event is what contribute to bad energy. And that's why we have war, we have disaster, we have all kind of trouble in the world. So we have to do something to counter it. We must uh, do what we can. Yeah, that's what. Okay, we have to contribute something better for the world instead of just sitting here. And I would sit here and tell everybody, oh, it's all negative, all negative. And then we do some positive instead. That's what it is. Are you happy? <laughs> I am. I I'm very impressed that you've been able to launch an entire network that focuses on positive, constructive stories and things that are important, like climate change. And uh, along yes. that line, if you don't mind my asking you a question. Uh, Master Ching, hi. Why is it that so much of your network focuses on animal and vegetarian issues? Why is that important to you? Okay, like this, darling. Our planet has been going not into a very positive direction for a long, long time now. And we have been killing too many animals and making them suffer. Not just killing, but torturing and making them untold suffering. And if anyone see all this truth behind that piece of meat or behind some cosmetic uh, product, we will just cannot bear, we just cannot bear. And I cry so much over the animal suffering. And I just had to do something. I just had to do something in order to rescue the animals and hence rescue us, the humans. 
Because if we continue this way, if we continue in our violent and abusive manner to a less defensive beings, then the disaster will be upon us. And that's why we're having a lot of trouble right now. And even we can see it with the naked eyes, there's no need to talk about bad karma or retribution or heaven blessing or hell punishment, nothing. We can see already everywhere because of the raising of the animals for meat. And that's why we're short of water, we're short of food. We are bringing our planet into a climate emergency right now. And that's why we have to change this. We must change it in order to save ourselves. Even not to talk about the animals. We have to save our planet for us, for the children. And that's why we're doing this. First of all, because of love. Second, because we have to save the planet in this emergency situation. Thank you for your question. Is there anyone else that has a question? Yeah, I was wondering if you could talk briefly about why you feel it's important to be loving and kind. Yes, sure. <laughs> because that will bring luck and happiness into our lives and that will bring peace into the world. Because loving kindness is our nature and anything we do against this, against our own nature will bring trouble to us, will bring disaster into the world. And we can see evidence is everywhere. Okay, we often hear that uh, God is love, yes. Okay, we can say also God is kind, fine. God is love, God is kindness. So, because we are God, we are the children of God, therefore we are God, even though some of us don't know it, but we are God. So in any case, if we want to be God-like or near God, Nearer to Godhood, we must be loving and kind because we are nearer to the God quality. And why we have to be nearer to God quality? Because love is the principle of the universe, is the building block to anything that exists now or in the future. If we are full of love, then we are more near to God. The more love the nearer to God we are, the more protected we are. Because God is mighty. And if we are nearer to God, then we are more mighty. And mightier, mightier as we go on, more loving and kinder. And if we are less God-like, then we are in trouble. We are subject to more suffering, more lower quality of intelligence and compassion and anything else that you do not like to have. If we have love, that means we are nearer to God or we are in control of our God quality. Then everywhere we go, we bless people and we protect ourselves and all the good things will come our way. That's why we have to be loving and kind, not just because it benefit others, but first of all, it will benefit ourselves. Because if we are God, then we are protected and we are the blessing. Because we are in this very dense energy and if we are not God-like, then we will fall into the other side of nature, the negative side, and then we will suffer so much. It's an ab abstract kind of uh, concept. <laughs> it's not easy to explain, but I hope you are happy with my answer. Yes. Very much so. All right, thank you. <laughs> I think we have uh, one more question, or two more questions. All right, love. Hello, Supreme Master Shanghai. This is Spice Williams Crosby, and thank you so oh. much. Thank you. Hello, so Angel. <laughs> thank you so much for being here with us, and even over the phone, we can feel your love and your spiritual energy. So thank you. Oh, thank you. Supreme Master Shanghai, I've been asked this question, but I would really like to hear you answer it. For you teach meditation as a way of peace, that is, through inner peace. And many people agree that meditation is good. It's a good thing. But why is it important to meditate on the light 
and sound, which is what uh, you teach. Can it be any other method? Uh huh. Okay. Any method of meditation, if it's based on loving and kindness, yes, and the yearning to know God, sooner or later, mostly will lead us to the light and the sound, which is the original energy of God, which is within ourselves. And the more we have this light and this sound within us, the more we connect with it, the more we are connected with ourselves or with God's selves. You see what I mean? Yeah? Yes. Mm. And the light and the sound method that uh, I have the honor to transmit to people is the most direct way. That's why. That's why it's better. It's quicker. For example, you could talk to my people at Supreme Master Television and ask how I am and maybe delegate a question to them and then they can ask me for you. But right now you are asking me directly, you see? Yes. So, yes. So the light and sound so-called method is like that. Many people meditate the whole lifetime or many, many long years and uh, having ascetic lifestyle and doing all kind of penance. And then now and then they might be able to have a glimpse of light, means a God self, or uh, listen or hear the music of the sphere. That means God also manifested in that. But the Kuan Yin method, for example, the moment you want initiation, the moment you sit down with me or one of my representatives, you enter into the light and the sound immediately. You see what I mean? And that's why I emphasize that. Otherwise, if any method would lead you to the light and sound, the sooner the better, then it's, it's also all right. It doesn't have to be Kuan Yin method. It doesn't have to be uh, the light and the sound method. But it's just quicker. It's just more direct, that's all. Because it's the Word of God that will teach us directly. The sound is the words of God, it's the teaching of God, which is melodious, which you, we can hear inside. And the light we can see with the inner vision. These are the two manifestations of God. The highest frequency, the highest form of God manifestation that we could realize inside. And that essence is God, and that essence is also within us because we are part of God, we are the children of God. And if we don't have these things, if we are not awakening them, then we are less than God, and maybe we are nothing. And we just exist, and then we are à la merci of the negative power in this world. And then we will suffer a lot now and hereafter as well. That's why we must make the connection with ourselves, with, with God, uh, the sooner the better. You know, to, to be able to be strong, to be mighty, uh, to be ourselves again. That's what it is. Thank you. Supreme Master Chen Hai, I, I appreciate your, your love for, for animals. As a Native American, they're very close to me. But in this case, yes. I have a question about a recent human rights incident. All right, love. A woman of age 43 was accused of adultery and now faces the punishment by law of being stoned to death. The Brazilian okay. president has asked for her asylum in Brazil. Supreme Master, yes. what is your opinion of this? Oh, God, oh dear. I have uh, also heard something like that on TV, and it's really a very heartbreaking story. I joined the president of Brazil to beg for her life, and uh, we all joined to beg the government of Ireland give her a second chance to life. Because if you ask my opinion, my opinion is forgiveness. Yes. Because God is love and forgiveness. When Jesus was challenged about a, a person in his lifetime who also so-called committed adultery and people want to stone her to death as well. Do you remember that story in the Bible? Yes, yes we do. I remember. Okay. Okay, you remember. Okay, fine. And what did Jesus say? That he who is without sin, sin cast, cast the first, first stone. stone. 
Yes, let the one who doesn't sin at all ever cast the first stone. <laughs> who in the human race doesn't commit some mistakes, some so-called sins sometimes? But in my opinion, adultery is a mistake that any of the human can sometimes commit, you see? But in my opinion, it's not a grave sin. It's just a betrayal of trust between two people in private. It's not an act against a nation or against uh, country security or anything that merit too much, like a death penalty. Suppose that woman is in love. We sometimes are, and she can't help it. You cannot punish, you cannot give a woman death penalty for being in love. Maybe she has been arranged to marry this man, this husband, and she wasn't in love with the husband. Maybe she was too young, she was not in love, she just married like everybody else. Maybe she is not happy in her marriage. Maybe this man was her love before. Or maybe they are destined to meet and love each other in this lifetime. Only God knows why it happened. So, in my humble opinion, we should never punish this woman or anyone who commits adultery because it's just a mistake and can change, can change. It can happen to anyone at any time, even into old age. You cannot tell your heart what to do. Okay, and if it's just a fleeting affair, then it, it might not even last. It might be for maybe for a few weeks or a few days even. Who knows? Maybe she's not happy in her marriage. Or it could be the husband also has some share in the failing marriage. And there's one more thing very important is that even for any grave sin, you know, so-called sin, like a crime, there is always a doubt whether it has been truly committed or it has been wrongly accused. So in many countries right now, the death penalty has been abolished. I hope the whole world soon will do that. Yeah, let's hope so, eh? Okay. Yes. One, because once we kill somebody, we cannot make her alive again. So we better always take a chance to wait, to check all the proof, if even suspected. Because there was one man in America recently on the news that he walked out of prison after 27 years because finally he has been proved innocent. You remember? Just recently, yes. last week or something. 27 yes. years long in prison for nothing, for the crime he never committed. So who knows? We should always give the suspected a chance, a chance, in case if it's wrong. Or another case is to give them a second chance to change, to redeem their sin, if that was really a sin that they have committed. Don't you think so, all of you? Yes. Give people a chance. Yes, we do. Yes. We do. Hello, hi, my name is Brian Lucas. Um, I'm also a raw vegan chef. Um, I go by the name wow. of Chef Be Live. Wow. Thank you for coming, Chef. Thank, Thank you for having me. <laughs> My question is, basically, I'm, I'm a gourmet raw living ch vegan chef, and I know that you're really big on the vegan foods and cuisine. And many years ago, I had a vision that I would be one of the ones to bring m gourmet raw living vegan food to the masses. And since you are bringing the vegan awareness to the world in such a way, I just am asking if you have any advice with how us fellow raw foodists, raw vegans can bring our consciousness to the, to the world. How can we spread raw vegan consciousness, living foods? Because every, yes, yes. every different yes. country is different. And, and I, I know that you're you know, across the oceans and I, I'm here in America, I've only experienced it here. So I just wanna, wanna have your opinion, please. Your advice. 
Okay, raw is definitely good. Hey, raw vegan, organic vegan is definitely good for people's health, and is lighter for the mind. Yeah, it's just that it's not so easy to bring this concept into the world uh, as fast as you would like to make it. Yeah, mm. I am also sorry that you have been trying hard, and the result is not as fast as you want. Right? It's it, it's all divine. I, you know, I don't. I don't have any time frame on it myself. I just do what I can. I see. Well, we just try to bring it on TV, on the radio, on the media, mainstream, and then people will accept it slowly. You know, because everything, anything new, takes time. We also have a raw vegan on our television. Yes, I have asked them to show it. But people are different, and I tell you honestly, I would be very happy if people become just vegan <laughs> first, <laughs> and then we will bring them into raw later. Hmm? How about that? Great! Thank you so much. You try your best. I try my best, and whoever <laughs> listen to us, then we thank God. We have uh, one more question from uh, Patrick Kilpatrick, great actor, director, and he's bald like me. We have so <laughs> star-studded party today, huh? My baldness is my own free will. I shave it. Uh, all right, Patrick. Supreme Master. These are two not light questions. One, um, I think we can all embrace your message of love and uh, kindness and forgiveness. But in the case of violence and war, um, when we say uh, it never has a place. What would your thoughts be on, on, say, the American Revolution or the American Civil War or World War II? Is it, um, is it truly nothing good has come out of these situations? And don't these rights, even in the vegan world, have to be defended sometimes uh, in the most extreme circumstances? Okay. I understand you, and I understand the Americans, as well as I understand everyone else who have chosen to think that maybe mm, a strong measure is necessary to defend something, right? Yes. I understand. I really wanted to know your thoughts about it. But the thing is, I would never agree to violence. It doesn't matter what circumstances. Suppose. People come here and uh, want to take my life, for example, and I have no other choice at all, and I just let them, because I will have other life. I would try to reason to these people, but if I cannot win, then I, I don't have any other choice except to let them. The best is that we let God take care, because we will have many lives, and because violence will make it worse only, yes? Deep down in our heart, we are all love and all peace. And if anything we do against this principle within our heart, within our nature, will bring only trouble and suffering consequences to us. Even though it might look in some moments or in that present time that we are winning, that we are uh, bringing situation under control, but the law of the universe has it otherwise. In the long run, we will have to pay for whatever we do that is not according to the universal principle. Sometimes we resort to violence or war, and we think that will bring the civilization one step forward, but it's not. In fact, we bring the civilization, the evolution, backward. If we have the eye to see the working of the law of retribution in the universe, we would never want to fight. The problem is everybody do it. It comes from love, <laughs> contradictory. But for example, if somebody wage war against America, for example, because he loves his, his country, or he thinks he loves his religion, or he loves his friend, who might have been killed by Americans somehow, you see. But this kind of love is not enough. It's not according with the 
universal love. In the universe, everything will take care of itself in time, if we just let it, and if we adhere to the principle of love, meaning that we will not cause harm to anyone, even in self-defense. Even in self-defense, for example, if one country wage war against another, and then because we think it's unjust, we also counter-attack the other country. Even though we had the right, even though we were the victims, still we have to pay for that. Because we forget, whenever we uh, make war with someone, then that moment we forget the principle of love, we forget ourselves, we cut a part of love away from ourselves. That means we are less God than the day before we took the violent act and killed somebody or to make war. So the less the God we are, the more we be into trouble and we are degrading ourselves into the lesser and lesser degree of consciousness. Now, for example, right now, suppose you are on the fourth level of spiritual consciousness and if you kill somebody, because we are already on the fourth only and not the higher level, and then we make war with somebody, we kill someone, then we are lesser than the fourth, we probably three and a half or something. And then, because that person get angry with us, or maybe his relatives and friends will come and revenge for him, and then we are obliged to kill again. And then we degrade ourselves further because we cut a big chunk of love out of our existence. That means we are less and less and less God-like now. And for the less God-like, he, she cannot mix with the more God-like person, cannot be one with God because he's not complete. So he has to go down in the lower scale of evolution. And that's why we must always forgive, must always love, must always love thy enemy. Everybody read that, but nobody <laughs> I think of practicing. I know it's hard, but that's the only way we can become a higher being and become closer and closer to God. So it's just by a natural course. What you're saying is tyranny would dissipate itself if you just infused it with love. Yes, sir. And even if we lose this body, we will have another. Because in the house of my father, there are many mansions. Why do we worry so much? about this physical body or even this physical existence here when we have a real home waiting for us. And of course, it's difficult to do than to say it. But if we are enlightened, if we truly can see the home of heavens while being alive during meditation, then we will not fear of losing anything. That's why the Bible says, whoever loves life will lose it. Life means the physical existence here. And the true home is for us elsewhere in heaven. And even if we don't go to heaven yet, and we lose the war, or we don't fight, even if we lose this body, we can be reborn again into a different uh, planet. There are plenty of planets in the universe for us to choose. Uh, to lose a body is just like to lose a shirt, yes, or to change it into a different outfit, sometimes even better. If we all know this, we will not fear and we will not fight. I don't make it so clear, do I? Very clear. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Thank Supreme you. Master. Thank you. The thing is, my love, when I'm alone and I meditate, everything is very clear to me inside. But when I bring it into this frigid and cold language of the human world is a little bit difficult for me to express. <laughs> no, you've, you've expressed yourself beautifully yeah. today, Supreme Master Ching Hai. On behalf of everyone here, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today, to answer the questions, and to share your beautiful insights with us. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Liv. I thank you. I have 
to thank you. I have to thank you all of you so much for your precious time and happy presence. Uh, it's uh, very good of you to forsake even Sunday barbecue to come <laughs> and grace this event. Right? Uh, and by the way, it's a very wise decision. You know, the food there is good, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, we're eating very well. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you and so you much. And you will get VIP treatment, <laughs> and you get to meet a nice, famous, good-looking people. Like John. Yes. <laughs> And uh, this food is delicious. Yes, uh, it Thank is. you for spreading peace uh, by your actions every day in your life. Bless you so much. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. And now I'd like to invite to the stage the Honorable Mike Davis, California State Assembly Member for the 48th Assembly District. And on behalf of President Barack Obama, he will present the U.S. President's Volunteer Service Award to Supreme Master Chin Ha. Thank you for coming, Mr. Davis. Thank you, you for inviting time. me. Thank you so much for inviting wow. me. Wow, what an honor for us. Thank you so much. Today, it is a privilege for me to present this award to Supreme Master Ching Hai. As the state legislator who was the first to endorse Barack Obama for president, the first legislator in California, it is certainly an honor for me to be here today to make this presentation. Our president, Barack Obama, has recognized Supreme Master Ching Hai for her dedicated years of service and humanitarian efforts. To date, she has donated more than $20 million in charity and relief efforts around the world over the past two decades. On behalf of President Obama, I would like to now read a part of his letter to Supreme Master Ching Hai. To Supreme Master Ching Hai, congratulations on receiving the President's Volunteer Service Award, and thank you for helping to address the most pressing needs in your community and our country. Your volunteer service demonstrates the kind of commitment to your community that moves America a step closer to its great promise. Thank you for your devotion to service and for doing all you can to shape a better tomorrow for our great nation. And it's signed, Barack Obama, President of the greatest nation on earth, United States of America. friends, including Mr. Davis uh, and the government of America, uh, we can never thank you enough for all your kindness and valuable support now and always. I can only say that I pray heaven to bless you, your country, and all the person you love, and all the ideals that you cherish. Everything will be good for you. And thank you for honoring us today. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, the government of America. And thank you, Mr. Davis. Thank you all for all this honor. May God bless you. God bless America. Thank you for having me today on this joyous occasion. We wish your channel, Supreme Master Television, many more years of broadcasting uplifting programs, gifting peace to all viewers. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Supreme Master Ching Hai, thank you again so much for spending the time with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, goodbye also, Mr. David.
Goodbye, John, Sally. Goodbye, Lisa, Bloom. Bye, Eric. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And uh, have a good time, huh? please. <laughs> Thank you. Please have a great time. God bless you and your family and friends. See you. Ciao. And you as well. Everyone says goodbye. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ms. Spice Williams Crosby, a vegan actress and founder of the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences Stunt Emmy. Mr. Al Kasha is a tremendously gifted composer, producer, and lyricist whose successful compositions have been sung by some of the most acclaimed singers spanning the past five decades. A record producer at age 22, he would be responsible for the signing of Aretha Franklin, Neil Diamond, Steve Lawrence, and Edie Gourmet, Andy Williams, The Grateful Dead, and Janis Joplin. In film music, Mr. Kasha's magical collaboration with the late songwriter, Mr. Joel Hirshhorn, gave birth to fabulous songs like the two Oscar-winning songs, The Morning After, from The Poseidon Adventure, and We May Never Love Like This Again, from The Towering Inferno. Another of Mr. Kasha's well-loved works is his score for the animated classic film, All Dogs Go to Heaven. His brilliance then carried over to television and musicals with David Copperfield, Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, which made him a Tony nominee. Also to his credit are two more Academy Award nominations, two Grammy nominations, four Golden Globe nominations, an Emmy Award and the People's Choice Award. It must also be noted that Mr. Al Kasha is the best-selling author music publisher, and a motivational speaker who shares his faith in God while continuing his wonderful gifts to music. Miss Liz Calloway, Emmy award-winning actress, singer, and recording artist, will be presenting Dream in the Night based on the poem of the same title by Supreme Master Ching Hai. Ms. Calloway's Broadway debut in Stephen Sondheim's Merrily We Roll Along was the start of an immensely impressive career. She has received a Tony Award nomination for her performance in Baby, played Grisabella, singing the famous song Memory in Cats for five years, and starred in many other on and off Broadway hits. As a concert singer, she has graced the prestigious stages of Carnegie Hall, the Kennedy Center, the Hollywood Bowl on tour with the Boston Pops Orchestra, and in Europe and Asia. The sought after recording artist sang for Anastasia and other children's movies and won an Emmy as a charming children's television show host. Please enjoy Dream in the Night Poem by Supreme Master Xing Hai, music by Al Kasha, and vocals by Liz Calloway, accompanied by cellist Mr. Kevon Torhev, violinist Mr. Pablo Mendez, Miss Leticia Sierra, and Miss Yvette M. Devereaux. Thank you so much for coming today. Uh, I met these folks who were really wonderful. And I think I became a vegan after today. And uh, I got applause for becoming a vegan today. And uh, the, uh, the difference between poetry and lyrics is that uh, poetry is something you read and lyrics is something you hear. Uh, and so I watched and looked at the poems by uh, the Supreme Master and tried to get the best qualities out of what what she was saying, and I hope that you enjoy it. And the first one is going to be A Dream in the Night, sung by Liz Calloway. Thank you. Sheets and pillows 
as fragrant sandalwood wafting through the air. Heartfelt was the time when we were still together, when our love was still. Same. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Our next performance is brought to us by the Siaha Wakayagi Dance Company, which houses the treasures of the Japanese classical traditions for more than 30 years. Presided by Master of Japanese Classical Dance, Madam Hisami Wakayagi. And for the occasion of Supreme Master Television's anniversary, we are extremely privileged as the highly ranked Madam Hisami Wakayagi herself will be dancing for us. And our first dance is Kena, which is about a young lady who falls in love with a handsome priest named Anchin Chirakawa. This recluse <laughs> priest was having no interest, flees to the Dojo Gigi Temple, hiding himself under um, this grand temple bell, uh, leaving the lady in a quest to reach his high abode. Kane will then be followed by the popular Sakura Sakura, reminiscent of Japan's wondrous cherry blossom landscape. Accompanying the dance is music by Koto players, Ms. Toashiko Okawa and Ms. Yoko Loi, and Mr. Jim Thompson on the shakuhachi flute.
That was very entertaining. Elegant. Very elegant. You know why I'm gonna say that? Because we got so many different cultures come up and I give know. dances, and yeah, it's great. Everybody's entertained. It's like traveling the world all in one afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome actor Patrick Kilpatrick. My name is Patrick Kilpatrick, and now we're pleased to introduce Mr. Bill Cunliffe, a prominent American composer, arranger, and jazz pianist, a Grammy Award winner and three-time nominee who has charted three albums for Warner Discovery Records in nationwide jazz polls, and worked with many jazz legends as well as Frank Sinatra. Mr. Cunliffe was the 1989 winner of the Thelonious Monk Jazz Piano Award and recipient of the National Endowment of the Arts, while his books have become standard references in jazz. Acclaimed for his innovative recordings and compositions, Mr. Cunliffe accepted his Grammy Award just this January for arranging his phenomenal West Side Story medley. Today, we have the great joy of listening to Mr. Cunliffe on the piano for his compositions of two songs, If and To Be Able to Love You, with poems by Supreme Master Ching Hai. Is she a genteel lady or, or not? Uh, extraordinary. <laughs> Lending her incredible voice for these pieces is Ms. Melba Moore, a Tony Award winning and Grammy nominated singer and actress praised for her ever evolving repertoire. Her recording of Lift Every Voice and Sing was instrumental in having the song entered into the congressional record as the official African-American national anthem. Ms. Moore is also the first African-American actress to play in the leading role of Fantine in the Broadway musical Les Miserables. Ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy If and To Be Able to Love You with accompaniment by celloist Mr. Kivan Torve, violinist Mr. Pablo Menendez, Ms. Leticia Sierra, and Ms. Yvette M. Devereaux. Hi, I'm really happy to be here and to do these songs of uh, Supreme Master Ching Hai. Um, I've written two songs uh, with her uh, that Melba and I are gonna do with this great string quartet. The first one's called If, and the second one is called To Be Able to Love You. Hope you enjoy them.
I hope that you can tell I'm extremely excited to be here. I feel like I'm amongst my own, people who are led by the heart, and the heart that tells them that God is first, and we are creatures of God, and we must love one another. So I'm very, very thankful to Supreme Master Shanghai for letting me be a part of the chosen number. Isn't the music incredible? I mean, not just us. And the next song, we have the privilege of performing together. of uh, flamenco originated with the gypsies as an expression of life and blended with Spanish folklore. As we'll see, this constant dialogue between singer, guitarist, guitarist, dancer, dancer, singer. Caminos Flamencos was founded by Emmy Award winning dancer and choreographer, Ye Lisa. What a great name. Mm -hmm. Its mission is to present contemporary, traditional, and theatrical dance programs featuring talented artists from Spain and the United States. 
Yalisa, and... Caminos Flamencos. Pañolillo que te di un lunes por la mañana y un lunes por la mañana Pañolillo que te di un lunes por la mañana A que los regalos y de la almanda de Triana De la almanda de Triana Con mi cobina rocío y una cuanta primavera Hoy lo llevas en el pelo cuando viene a mi vera. La contraseña, la contraseña de amor, yo le pido a Dios del cielo que el lunes por la mañana tú traigas puesto el pañuelo. Me pidiste que estuviera y una semana sin perte. Y una semana sin verte. Me pidiste que estuviera una semana sin verte. Y mi corazón sentía la fatiga de la muerte. Y fatiguita de la muerte. No te pido a loco porque no podía tenerte. Que semanita me espera hasta que yo pueda verte. La contraseña, la contraseña de abajo, yo le pido a Dios del cielo que el lunes por la mañana tú traigas puesto el pañuelo. ¡Ale! Salga la luna, yo voy a verte. Ay, yo voy a verte. Cuando salga la luna, yo voy a verte. Cuando salga la luna, yo voy a verte. Que yo voy a verte. Que porque son maluca para yo perderte. Ay, porque son maluca. Hay como un por Dios, pero yo voy haciendo el camino, yo voy haciendo el camino, y es porque te quiero, Rocío. A mí me gusta acusar y el cante de los romeros. Y el cante de los romeros. A mí me gusta acusar el cante de los romeros. Y se te mece en el alba mi corazón rociero. Mi corazón rociero, el olor del vino verde y el pajarillo hilguero son de un tamborinero. Yo voy haciendo el camino, yo voy haciendo el camino, y es porque te quiero, Rocío. No te 
I gave a great message today. Anyone who gives a message of love, and she was very specific in her teaching. I know she says I didn't possibly penetrate, but she did penetrate our audience. The performances were magnificent, but I want to say that I was most moved the impact that was made by the Supreme Master when she was talking to people. Amongst other things, she answered the question, the role that she plays in the peace process in terms of encouraging people to have peace. And coming from South Africa and from the history, the background that we have, I didn't take that light because I know it's very important. She talked about a few things 
to basically say, as long as you're dealing honestly from the heart and with love, you'll be able to get along through anything. Sometimes that can sound trite, but this didn't. This was very, very sincere and uplifting. And I really liked what she had said today about like just peace. And even when you're like in a position where you're facing your life being threatened, to just like know that you're protected divinely on another level, that we can always have another life. We can always go to heaven. Yes, her words that Master Ching Hai shared with us about acceptance and about how we don't need to fight back. We will go on to another, another life and we don't have to fight and balance things out in this life. I heard her on DV uh, on tape. I have all her books. So she sounded exactly like I thought she was going to sign. One of my favorite things is when she said there's no reason for war. And if somebody wanted to harm her in some way, first she would reason with them. If there was no reason, she would submit. Because that'd be the loving thing to do. This is just one life form. And we got many more to go. So many people are in fear of losing what this world is that it can hinder us in being able to go to the fifth level. So for her to say that is very powerful because you don't get to hear that from many people whatsoever. It's so intertwined in all of her words and the poems. So it, she's very consistent in just her compassion and her grace. So it's beautiful to see. I asked a question about meditation is good for you, but why is the only way to a particular inner light is through sound and light? And uh, when the Supreme Master answered it, I got goosebumps. It connected dots for me. It was almost like, oh, of course. It's through the vibrational frequency and the light, and that is God. And when you get right to it, it shortens your ability to connect. And it was like, oh, now I understand what it means. And she answered it so beautifully. And I've had a lot of people come up to me since I asked it going, wow, that was an amazing question. It meant so much to me. And I said, yeah, it meant a lot to me too. I'm kind of a warrior guy, you know, so um, to feel her love and her, her presence is a, a really wonderful thing. And she serves as an inspiration for all of us. It's almost a Jesus Christian kind of personality that um, she really, puts forth, uh, you know, the turning the other cheek, r relentlessly putting through kindness. It speaks directly to me, and I think uh, it could speak to so many more people. She was saying that we're all kind and pure inside, and if we do something out of balance, it feels wrong. So if we just, like, really listen to ourselves, we'll know the right answer. She has compassion for the whole world and finding the essence of everything that unites the world is love. She is about love and I love her feelings about the war and not being in war and you don't need war if you have that love for each other. It was very inspiring to hear her speak, to, to hear the message of, of peace and, and love that should be spread throughout the world. Supreme Master Shanghai talked about really engaging in forgiveness, believing in others, and believing in really having that positive voice in yourself. And I think that's inspirational for everyone and inspirational for me as an individual as I go out there and try to live that message. She's so humble and so loving that it's magical experience. It's like I was in meditation listening to her. And some of the things that she talked about um, with people who have uh, betrayed trust, uh, like in the adultery uh, scenario that they talked about, the woman who was going to be stoned to death because of adultery. Just the way she put it all into words was very moving to me. So, so non-judgmental, and that's the way we all need to be. She's right that man should not be the judge of other men. Only the Creator can judge us. So her answer as far as it being a mistake, that's the truth. This is very, very beautiful message for all the world. I hope one day all the leaders in the world get this message.
I think Supreme Master has a lot to offer the world and she's obviously on her mission and people love her and they were cheering for her in the reception room uh, even before she said a word. Supreme Master Ching Hai is obviously a Supreme Master in terms of really being focused and dedicated to studying what is the essence of life and how it should be shared and how it should be empowering of other people and how it really is the epitome of humanity. The supreme message on her television station and wherever she goes is love one another and love humanity, love the creatures and take care of it. Listening to her, I feel like, you know, she's really influenced me on how to look at everything in a different way. I enjoyed it as well. I also loved when we first heard her voice and everyone ran to the television set, you know, backstage. She's very inspirational, she's very wise, and it's just lovely to be a part, you know, to be able to hear her and hear her message. I love, I fully believe in all of her principles, and I'm just so inspired by her compassion. And I love seeing someone with such deep compassion who's actually brave enough to spread that message to the world in such a public forum, and it's just so exciting to see that get out there, because it's a good thing, we need more of it. Yeah. yeah. It takes courage to do that. Supreme Master has heart and soul and love, and it shows. It shows in her, her words, it shows in music, it, it shows in the way her voice sounds. We're lucky, we're very, very lucky. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart and we pray for you and we love you and just thank you for your compassion and your generosity and your love. Supreme Master, I just, I, I love your poetry and I love you. Supreme Master Chin Ha, I honor you. Master Xing Hai's poem, just with the vibrational frequencies of the music and her words, it just makes you, it lifts you, it lifts you. You feel like you're just enveloped in this sea of love. And uh, of course, the woman who sang it, Liz um, Calloway, had such an amazing voice, and it made us all feel like we were just on the same note. Still forever. If I could speak directly to Supreme Master Ching Ai. I would probably ask her about how she got her idea for the poem for Dream in the Night. Um, I would love to talk to her about it because it's a, it's a beautiful imagery in the poem and I'd love to know what inspired her to write it. I think the combination of her words and, and Al's music, it was a, it was a very nice um, collaboration there. You know, when you sing someone's words, you try to interpret that, and, and there's such interesting imagery, some beautiful, uh, some happy imagery, some sad imagery. I thought it was a very, uh, very interesting poem. So I would love to ask her how she got the idea for that, and also to tell her that I think her jewelry is really pretty. <laughs> I feel fabulous. I feel like I did what I was put on the planet to do, sing for the love of humanity and sing new songs. I'm a born again Christian and so my scripture is always saying, sing to the Lord a new song. I said, well, Lord, give me a new song. <laughs> and he gave me some beautiful ones to sing. Well, the essence of the word, if love no longer exists, this would be the realm of death. And I do believe that love is stronger than death. The arts are very powerful and they transcend language and culture. And so when that's what the subject is, the very essence of life, you're doing what you're, you were put here. My dear, carry on this beautiful dream. We 
really appreciated the stress on vegetarianism, on saving the planet, and on environmentalism, something that is very, very important in these times. Inspiration is overused, but Supreme Master Ching Hai, you really are an inspiration because I'm a woman and I work in television here in the United States and so often I feel that there's so much negativity and that we focus on things that really aren't that important and we don't focus on what's meaningful. It's very inspiring to me that there is this entire network that's devoted, to, I mean who would think that there could be entire shows devoted to vegetarianism and animal cruelty. So. It's just really inspiring to me and moving, and I'm very happy to be a part of it today. There's so much negativity in the world, yet we have this, everything about the station is so positive, and um, it, it makes me grateful and so happy to have Supreme Master TV on planet Earth. Supreme Master Television really focusing on things that are uplifting and just like rejuvenating to the soul and spirit. So. I applaud her and I applaud this program, we do, um, for taking the risk to, to go against the grain and bring something that is actually wholesome. I love it. It's one of the few medias where you can really get important information that can actually transform the planet, which is something that we desperately need right now. This is a network that's on its own and she, she's grasped the media of our time and she's putting it forth with great messages of importance. And you can tell that it's real, that it comes from a place of great integrity. Hi, this is Patrick Kilpatrick and you're watching Supreme Master TV. Be veg, go green to save the planet. Hi, this is Roger Allers. I'm the director of The Lion King and I just want to wish Supreme Master Television a very happy fourth year anniversary. Hi, I'm Melba Moore and you're watching Supreme Master Television. Be veg, go green to save the planet. Hi, I'm Eric Roberts and you're watching Supreme Master Television. Be veg, go green to save the planet. Do you love your family? Love animals. They're our family. Thank you.